Okay guys, today is day four of my journey. I've been exercising four days in a row, dieting four days in a row, taking supplements four days in a row. So right now my body is kind of feeling a little bit stiff and tight. So I'm going to start posting 10 minute flows of um, yoga and Pilates, like a combo of each. So today I'm gonna do some stretching, a little bit of strength, just go with the flow, which is why I'm calling it a 10 minute flow. I'm just, just gonna do whatever feels good to my body. So if you wanna join me and you feel like you're able to do that, um, that'll be fun, so please do. I'm gonna start with a chair today. This is more of like a beginner thing. So I'm just gonna start by stretching out my legs, my quads in the front here. I've been doing some Stairmaster, um, some bicycling, and some squats the last couple days. So my legs are just slightly sore, just good enough to know I'm doing something and uh, not overly sore though. So thank goodness I could still do uh, more today and every day. I need, that's why I'm only doing 10 minutes of stretching and strengthening because the rest is gonna be bicycling, walking, or Stairmaster. But I do wanna incorporate some stre stretching and some body strengthening to make sure that my body is staying strong and stable as possible, especially because I do have a lot of joint instability and joint pain. So I am limited, so this is kind of a beginner thing. All right, so next I'm gonna stretch my inner thighs. By just leaning to one side, you can use the chair or a ball. If you don't have a ball, um, bring your chair along with you for extra balance and just go as deep as you can, stretching that inner thigh and then switch sides. And if you don't need to hold on to anything, that's fine too. <sighs> just, I can feel that super deep in my inner thigh, but it feels good. So, <sighs> all right, now I'm gonna go in for a half fold, wide leg half fold. Stretching more of the whole backs of the legs, which feels really nice. Trying to keep my back flat and reach my head towards the ground. So just bending at the hips. Okay, back up. Now I'm going to do um, my favorite is a roll down. This just gets the spine moving, the whole back side of the body. You're getting a stretch in the back of the legs, stretch down the spine, traction in the neck, letting it all loose, letting it hang, shaking your head no and yes, and then rolling back up one vertebra at a time to really get that spine moving. Hands up, reach over to one side like so, stretching that torso on my left, this side, that's like my lats and stuff like that, gets super tight, especially if you do a lot of sitting. It's good to stretch and move on the exhale. Inhale is normally to prepare, so here we are, inhale. Exhale back up. Oh, just feels so good. I'm gonna take my hands behind my back, lift my chest up, oh, opening the chest. Rolling back down now, walking the hands out. I'm gonna do a down dog. This is nice for the all the way down to the calves, even. I can feel a nice stretch in the back of the legs as well as the spine. Nice shoulder stabilization going on here. Pressing into the mat, keeping the shoulders down my back and away from my ears. So they're really activated here. I'm gonna take it down to my knees for cat cow. This is one of my favorite stretches. This just gets the spine moving. Stretching out that back. My back gets so tight. Right now I have tightness in my, between my shoulder blades, I get stabbing pain and my low back is kind of sore and tired from just biking and squats and abs, so. That's that. And then I'm gonna do, you can use your chair. Um, 
or a Swiss ball. I feel like this is more mobile, so I'm gonna use my Swiss ball to get an enhanced um, thoracic spine extension here. So by lifting my hand up and pressing my chest towards the ground, I get a nice stretch in my sh the front of my shoulders where the lats are, as well as in the thoracic spine, I'm getting some good thoracic spine extension. So again, you can do that with your chair, like so. Or oftentimes, if, if you're at work or just want a quick stretch, I do this all the time. I'll just get the back of a chair so that you don't have to get on the ground and extend here. I also swish my shoulders and hips to opposite directions. So I'm pushing my shoulders to the left and my hips to the right on both sides. Now I'm pushing my shoulder to the right, pushing through my shoulder on the right and swishing my hips over towards the left. So this enhances a nice lat stretch. Stretching, I can feel it all the way down my whole side. So if you sit a lot, this is a really good stretch. Um, so you can do that with your chair, nice and easy. I was gonna do it on my ball like so, but since I already did it, I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate. You can do it with your ball, the chair, anything, but that is an awesome stretch down the side. It feels so, 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 so good. So let's see, I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna do a piriformis stretch. So that's also good if you're sitting a lot. I feel like I should stick to the chair because in case you're at work or you know you don't have a mat or it's hard for you to get down onto the floor, um, you could just use a chair. So you really don't, excuse me Ruby, you really don't need a lot of equipment. So here I am just crossing my left leg over my right leg, sitting up nice and tall. And then you'll probably feel it right away, like I already feel it. If you want to increase that stretch, Ruby, stop walking in front of the camera, please. Just lean forward. Whew. Or you can even lift your leg up towards you if you want to lean back or sit up. Um, so playing with that to get that stretch down in your piriformis, which gets, which is a small muscle that gets really tight on most people. Um, and you have nerves that run through there, the sciatic nerve. So a lot of people are familiar with sciatica and that nerve that runs underneath the muscle oftentimes has problems because that muscle gets so tight. So really just stretching that muscle out, um, is super important to maintain, um, flexible hips as well as making sure that nerve doesn't get compressed or irritated. So again, it's deep, deep, deep in your hip. You can increase it by leaning forward. You can lift your leg up and cradle it like this. So yeah, you could do all of these in a chair at home or at work. And then I'm gonna demonstrate it on the mat too, so you have options. So on the mat, I like to do it on my back. You just take the same position, one leg over the other, and here you just bring, oh, oh my gosh. You just bring it in towards your chest. I feel like I get it a lot deeper on my back. I'm even feeling it in my inner body because, or my hamstrings. They're super tight. We did all of the leg stretches. We stretched the piriformis, the quads, the hamstrings, the inner thigh, the calves. We did the lats. We did the roll down. We did the cat cow. So I wasn't even timing. Let me see where I'm at. Nine minutes. So it's almost 10 minutes. Um, so that was all stretching. I feel like I should do a strengthening exercise. So um, let's see. I'm going to take this wall right here, this is a really good exercise for your serratus and for shoulder stability. I have neck problems, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So hands against the wall, sink the chest towards the wall, and then push it up. So those shoulder blades are moving together as your chest moves towards the wall and then apart. So I used to do this at work sometimes, trying to really move them symmetrically and slowly together. Noticing if there's like any rigidity going on, like one shoulder moving more smoothly or more rigid. And doing it 10 to 15 times. 
That's like a perfect beginner shoulder stabilization, which is extremely important for neck pain. When our shoulders are unstable and going like this all over the place when we lift things and they're all wobbly and our scapulas are wingy. When that's going on, it really just allows the muscles to tug on the neck because the shoulder muscles connect also to the neck and the back muscles. So it's really important to stabilize that serratus anterior, which is the shoulder stabilizer. So if you have pain, that is a great beginner exercise just to do it against the wall, test it out, see how it feels, make sure you can tolerate it. And then once you're able to do that, you can take it into quadruped, which is my favorite, and doing the same thing. So taking the chest down towards the mat and then pushing it away, slowly controlling it coming down. So it's a controlled eccentric movement and then pushing it away. Also, you want your hands to be slightly in front of your shoulders to get the best serratus anterior activation. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Also try to make sure that the spine, the cervical spine, which is your neck, is straight so your head's not hanging, it's not extended. Trying to keep your chin tucked and keep that backside as straight as possible. And while we're here, we'll just, um, we'll add on to that. So if that's okay, we're gonna take one hand up you can hold it for three to five seconds. Switch hands, making sure that your whole body is staying solid and still. You're only moving your arm and nothing else. So the whole body is frozen. And then, so that increases, you know, the stabilization that you're putting into that one arm and you're also working this back arm by lifting. We're gonna do the same thing on each leg. So slide it out, lift it up. So here I'm working the glutes on this side and I'm using this leg to stabilize. And we're gonna switch. Slide, control, making sure that the spine is not moving, ah, or that you're not sinking through the arms like I just was. So I love doing exercises in quadruped because I feel like it works the whole body. Although I'm working my lower legs here, I'm also working my arms as well as my back and my core. So you can play with this. You can do like just alternating legs, five on each side, making sure that you're staying perfectly still. I feel like it's easier to slide to control the movement versus like just lifting because you might turn or move like that. So really focusing on keeping that body so solid. And then to progress that, um, you could do alternating arm and leg and making sure you're not rocking or losing it. So I'm just gonna do a couple on each side because I feel like I'm gonna burn myself out here. You can see me struggling to balance. I'm starting to feel it in my shoulder, which is not good. So whew. that's my exercise for today. And now I'm gonna go ride my bike for 30 minutes. This was supposed to be a 10 minute flow and it ended up being almost 15, but uh, try it out. Let me know how you like it and follow my journey. I'm gonna do this for as many consecutive days as I can. Um, right now I'm on day four. So we'll see, I'm taking it one day at a time. All right, take care guys.